The NWA will make history with its first all-women's wrestling show on Saturday, August 28th via Fight TV from St. Louis. NWA Empower! I put the extra R's in. Led by Mickey James will feature some outstanding wrestlers. And one of them you've seen in AEW. She is a king of queens. Kylan King. Thank you, Kylan. 2021. 2021 has been very good for you. Tell us more, first of all, about NWA Empower. Um, I'm super excited. It's uh, this Saturday, August 28th. It's a huge uh, pay-per-view all about women. Um, it's ran by women. The coaches are women. And it's just, it's a bunch of amazing talent getting the opportunity to shine uh, on a, on a huge platform and i'm really excited a lot of the names that i get to share this card with is is a dream come true and some of the girls i have worked before uh so i get to work with them again I'm, I'm very very excited this is it's a great time to be a woman in women's wrestling and uh, it just keeps getting better have you ever been involved in an all-women show before i have um not a pay-per-view no i've i've done quite a few all-women's uh indie promotions but this is my first like all women's pay-per-view so that i'm i when i got the news when they asked me to be a part of it i was like oh my gosh yes i was so excited what do you think of the name empower i love that because i'm a huge i'm a huge advocate for women supporting women um and that is exactly is what that is it's empowering each other making sure like not only that we feel good and strong every single day but we're doing that for the others around us because the uh, being a woman in, in wrestling is not an easy job uh there's a lot of of mental um obstacles to go through as a woman um and the fact that we get to have a pay-per-view that not only uh recognizes and promotes women but also has a title that is a huge factor in what we're trying to do to uplift each other is really really cool and it's a great symbolism i think well that's interesting what are some of the things that you have to process and go through and how has it changed from when you first started getting in the ring and giving this whole journey a try process and go through you mean like just as a woman yes okay um so, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot more spots for men on cards than there is for women. Uh, you go to any promotion and you can see probably about eight men's matches and you're lucky if you get two women's matches, right? So there's that. So we're all vying for, for a spot. We all want to be, you know, out and about and having work. So that's, that's a big factor we have to go to. So we're constantly working to, to be the one that gets booked next. You know what I'm saying? So the fact that we're having something like this, where it's, it's not, oh, we only get two matches, the whole show is about us. That's just something that's really, really cool and helps us like not worry about that part of it and just worry about putting on one hell of a show. And, and I'm really excited for that. That and, and then, you know, just fighting for time, fighting for stories, you know, there's, there's a lot more going on for men usually than there is for women. And we are very creative individuals. We have lots of, of spark and ideas and um, again, having a pay-per-view like this where we all just get to come together and throw our ideas and, and create one hell of a show. It's, it's the most amazing opportunity for women in wrestling. How has it been for you creating, coming up with ideas and getting more comfortable in doing that? Because I'm sure when you first started, it was like, okay, I just need to soak in as much as I can. Now we're seeing you grow before our eyes and develop and improve and getting better. Part of that is also being able to come up with some ideas and be creative. So how has that process gone for you? Honestly, a lot of my creativity comes from who I'm in the ring with. Um, I, I, I used to be a little bit more of an eccentric, crazy character. And now my my vision for myself is more of a strong female, like warrior kind of uh, symbol symbol in women's wrestling kind of like standing out in women's wrestling that's why i call myself the king because yes it is my last name but it's also a little bit of symbolism for uh women's equality in wrestling like yeah a bunch of girls call themselves queen but you know i'm, I'm a king so for me i try to find creative ways to bring that into my matches to show strength to show power um 
but I do like to have a little bit of fun. So like I said, it depends on my opponent. I've had some matches where it's just, we're beating the crap out of each other. And that's the story we're telling, you know, the power, uh, the story for, for the position of power. And then there are other people I get in the ring with and it's just, you know, it's, it's a, a wacky time. Like we're just, they're just being trick tricksters and I have to figure out the game and how to play around with them, you know? Who are some of the ones that you have a little more fun with and are able to do some things like that? Oh, oh my gosh. I just recently had a match with Jasmine Allure um, at Mission Pro Wrestling, and it was really, really cool getting to put a match together with her because she's got this huge heel gimmick going on right now. And uh, so we got to be very creative with that match. Um, oh my goodness. Uh, uh, La Rosa Negra was really fun to wrestle as well because she is very, very sassy, and she's she's very um, connected to the people around her in the crowd. Like she dances, she reacts to them very, a lot, and that energy was really cool to feed off of because there were certain like things that I would do in the room with her that I don't normally do with other people, um, like like dancing and stuff like that, being really really silly, and even. Um, long like last year like when I when I got in the ring with school like a little bit of her sassiness brought up something in me and then I've had characters too where it's just like you know they're it's less moves and more uh talking at you and so I feel like that brings out kind of an attitude in me not necessarily a bad attitude but just like just reactions and facial expressions that you normally wouldn't see from me because I've always been my whole life, I've always been in a very, like, a fighter. So that's always been my personality. I just want to beat the crap out of people. So I think the way that I get creative is depends on how how or who I'm wrestling. Well, you mentioned La Rosa Negra. She is, like, 100 to 10% just on fire, raring to go, all out energy. Oh, She's yes. She's tough in the ring, too. But she brings that aura with her when she comes out and she's dancing and yelling and screaming. Really just, it's really cool to see. You've had such an amazing run so far. And what year did you start your journey in professional wrestling? So I started, I, I got into a professional wrestling school back in 2016. Uh, before that, I, I knew I wanted to be a wrestler for the longest time. I did MMA for about six years before that. And in the last year of training at my, uh, at my dojo, I knew I, I was about to transition into wrestling. So I was, I was a, a nut job and I looked up wrestling videos and like training videos. And I like, was like, training myself <laughs> in our dojo so i like to say that i started back in 2015 but i wasn't in an actual wrestling school until very early 2016 and then i had my first indie show in 2018. you really start training and then it took you a few years to actually go from that initial start to actually having a debut match yes which is, um, which is good. The process took a little longer because sometimes it's like maybe you're wrestling for a few months and then they throw you right in there. But for you, it took yeah. a little while to get going. And I meant, mean also that's amazing all the things you've been able to do in that short period of time. It's really a testament to having the right trainers and, and taking time and learning correctly. Um, I trained at Team 3D Academy under uh, Bubba and Devon and Billy Gunn, as well as uh, King Serpentico and Jay Rios. And their program is very rigorous. You have to be there for a certain amount of time before you can even learn how to put matches together. And then after you learn how to put matches together, you have to be there for another certain amount of time. And then you have to wait to be cleared. So it was a very smart and like I said, rigorous progress. They trained you. So you were an undeniable athlete and that you had all the tools that you needed to become successful. I knew from a very young age that I wanted to be a wrestler. Uh, I just withheld myself because of certain people in my life that weren't crazy about it. Um, but I waited until I was almost 25 to finally get into the sport. And so I knew like, I didn't want to waste time. I wanted to do it right the first time. That way, as soon as I was good to go out and do shows, I could just, you know, take off. And that's exactly what they did. Even though some people might sit there and go, oh, this is too long. It was perfect because as soon as I started doing shows, even though I wasn't 
the, the best wrestler in the world, I was prepared. And then slowly over time, I start learning and progressing and learning the things that you can't necessarily learn in school. But I was ready for that because of all of the process they make you go through and the pay, like the way they teach you, it's just, it's perfect. And now uh, today I train with a gang girl in South Florida. And then when I'm with AEW, I get to train under Dustin, which is awesome. What a list. Yeah. Of trainers. That's really cool. And Kylan, so 2018 is when you had your debut match. Yes. And here we are in 2021, you've had to go through, we've all had to go through this pandemic. So that year, it's yeah. amazing. This is amazing to me to see, as I said before, how far you've come in the short period of in-ring experience. What have you enjoyed so far about this quick journey? Um, honestly, it's, <clears throat> I'm trying to think of how to phrase myself. The, the, the most amazing thing that I have found within wrestling, uh, growing up, there's a lot of question marks about yourself, life, what you're meant to do in it. And the biggest thing that I came to terms with was realizing who I was and what I was meant to do on this earth was when I got into wrestling. Like all the things that I didn't like about myself or I was insecure about, they all made sense in wrestling. I don't know if that, if that makes sense, but like just the fact that I'm super tall, the fact that I'm very, uh, uh, I've always been a thick muscular girl. I've always been very, very pale. Little things like that, suddenly those things made me stand out and made me beautiful and powerful and gave me a presence. And suddenly for the first time in my life, I felt wanted in a room and 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 accepted in a room and, and it all just made sense and then to to take off on that the family that you that you get through wrestling i mean they always say you're not going to get along with everybody and that's okay but honestly like the some of the people that i've met in wrestling have been the have become the closest people to me in my life like they've changed me they've made me a better person and you know I probably talk to a lot of them now more than I do terrible to say, but my own family, because they're just constantly there. And we're always constantly trying to lift each other up and grow because we all love wrestling so much. And we want it to, to stay relevant and to stay important to other people outside of wrestling. And so we're constantly in that bubble and it's just the most incredible family you could ever ask for. Did you do any MMA fighting? <laughs> I did. Um, so when I say MMA, I don't mean like, cage i did traditional uh karate it was uh the style was called kwamukan karate and within that dojo we also learned judo jiu-jitsu and uh the training of kabuto which is weapons training like both staffs and, and size and stuff like that um i like i said i did that for like six years and i did quite often compete in competition so we had like little tournaments and stuff like that um and so I would do, I did a lot of sparring tournaments. I did um, what they call kata tournaments, which is like a demonstration. Forms. And then I, yes, yes. And then um, judo and jiu-jitsu stuff. I did more of the sparring though. I loved the stand-up fighting. I loved, I loved the psychology of trying to figure out how to get in on your opponent, even though they're just as fast or, you know, come out maneuver you, like finding ways to trick people into moving for you so you could get in and strike on them. I thought that was so fascinating. So that was most of the competition that I did. Were you competing against men and women? Yes. Yeah. What uh, was so, that so, dynamic like? And, and then transitioning to pro wrestling, did you also compete against men in pro wrestling? Training wise, yes, but actual ring competition. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, some of my craziest matches have been intergender matches. I so I grew up with five brothers. That's kind of how my my intro story into wrestling. One of my brothers was a huge fan, and like that was the only time we all sat still and got along uh, was when wrestling was on the TV. And um, so I always joke that like I was doing intergender wrestling since I was like eight years old because <laughs> like my brothers and I we would get as soon as like. The wrestling was off the tv we would get all the pillows and blankets from our house and we would create 
I use quotation marks very heavily, create our own little ring. And we would just pick each other up and slam each other. I, of course, I was the youngest. So I was the, always the one getting picked up and used to learn all the new moves and stuff. But yeah, I've been, I've been tussling around and fighting with boys since I was a little girl. So um, when I got into wrestling, it wasn't like a foreign concept to me. I know some people are very like oof about it, but to me, I was just like, yeah, let's go, let's fight. Like I, I've never had an issue with it and I've done it plenty on the indies. Some of my favorite matches are with, with guys. I, what I always say one of my favorite uh, matches is with Wolf Taylor at Mayhem on Mills. It was the first time I ever had a ladder match and I was terrified, but he was just as terrified. And we just, it was one of those experiences where we got to be terrified together and just learn and just beat the crap out of each other and then go back and be like, all right, this worked and this didn't. Thank you so much for going through that with me. It was it was really, really, really cool. What do your brothers think of you now and being able to see you sometimes, whether it be on TNT or on YouTube or wherever? They text me all the time. It's, <laughs> it's really funny how, it, how it's all changed because I remember growing up, like, um, my brothers were always like the super athletes and, and like I was just a little sister in the background. And then at some point, not to say that they're not athletic anymore, they're they're still kicking butt in life, but at some point it flip-flopped because I'm the one who ended up doing like this crazy sport and like going going like full on career with it. And then they kind of uh, decided to go on different paths. So it's, it's so funny because they text me all the time. Like who knew out of all the children, you would be the one <laughs> to go? Because I mean, like they, they were in the military. Like two of my brothers went into the Marines. Another one was in uh, the Navy. And then the uh, fourth one was in the Air Force. So it's like of all of the siblings, I don't think anybody thought it was going to be me who actually like had a career that had to do with athletics. Like, I think they always thought it was going to be the boys. And then, so they always text me all the time. Like, oh, we're so proud of you. It's so cool. Like of all of us, who knew it would be you? Like, so, and, and they love it. I mean, I think honestly, like I, I know that sometimes a lot of wrestling fans fall in and out of love with wrestling, depending what's going on. Right. And I know, I know for a short period of time, one of my brothers kind of had that phase where he just fell out of love with it for a little bit. But when I started to get into it, like when I finally like fully said like, okay, this is going to happen. He kind of went on the journey with me. And I think during the journey, he refell in love with wrestling. And so that just makes my heart happy because it's, it's nice to see that light in his eyes again, when he watches, when he turns on the TV and, and watches a match. 